You are so beautiful. To me, you are so beautiful. To me, can't you see? You're everything I hope for. You're everything I need. You are so beautiful to me. <laughs> What's up, guys? It's Saturday, October 26, 2024. We're at the Bitcoin block height of 867,515. Today's Bitcoin price, as, as of this recording, is right at 67,000, which means for one dollar, for one dollar, you can get 1,493, and yes, I said it, Satoshis for one dollar. <laughs> My goodness, guys. <laughs> Welcome back to Satoshi Saturday, the official Satoshi Saturday. I think I'm the only one that does it. Episode number 37, I think. Weeks have been flying by. So there's been some controversy this week, as you can see from the title. Uh, cold storage is the best storage. And I'll get into that in a second. But uh, the great Michael Saylor, Mr. Giga Chad himself, has said some controversial remarks. And I want to talk about that a little bit. Uh, for those of you that don't know, he did a two-part interview uh, about a week ago in total, I think. And in one of the statements, he basically was talking about uh, cold storage, <laughs> you know, saying that uh, in a nutshell, that you can put your Bitcoin into a custodian and some of these cold uh, storage wallet makers, if you will, are, you know, not saying he, he said they're just trying to make money, but, you know, they're trying to sell you a product. That's why they want you to put it in cold storage and you should be able to trust the... Uh, <laughs> the powers that be and the big custodians that are going to be coming and stuff like that uh, versus holding on your own and everything else. And he was saying, you know, he's comparing it to the gold uh, confiscation, the 6102, the executive order 6102. And he basically said, oh, they didn't, you know, confiscate the gold. I mean, they said if you didn't, they'd, they'd put you in jail. So if the government tells you to do something, you don't then see what happens, see if they make you do it or not. And uh, I want to talk about that for a second. So first, let me say this. Why did he say it? Now, if you guys didn't watch the clip, I'll, I'll put the clip in the, in the description. Uh, why do I think he said it? Well, he's got one foot in and one foot out with Bitcoin in, in, in the TradFi, Bitcoin and the TradFi uh, institutions, you know, because he's still, you know, he's a, he's a multi-billionaire and, um, you know, he's just, he's not like us guys, okay? I think we really understand how he really feels about it, but he has to say certain things because eventually more people than not, okay, I'm just telling you this, more people than not are going to be holding their Bitcoin, the, the newer people now, not the people that have already been here, because I think, um, you know, more of the Bitcoin is going to be held in cold storage, but with the OGs and stuff, but there are gonna be a lot more people that are gonna have less Bitcoin than, than the OGs, obviously. They're gonna be holding their Bitcoin, unfortunately, with custodians. It's just, it just is what it is, man. And a lot of people are not gonna to wanna to memorize 12 or 24 words. So it just, it just is what it is, and he knows that. But again, he's, uh, he's getting himself ready to be the uh, biggest Bitcoin bank in the world, and he will be. And I'm, I'm gonna talk about that in, in future videos. Uh, but let's just say micro strategy and their strategies are not going to be the strategy in the future. But that's why he said it, guys. He's just, uh, you know, he's in the TradFi world. He's a multi-billionaire. 
you know, a lot of people are calling him a suit and everything. I, I'm not going to go that far. Uh, is he an anarchist? <laughs> no, he's somewhere in between. Okay, but let's just say, you know, when you when you when you measure somebody in the world, no matter what it is, if you're voting for a president or whatever, you got to weigh the weigh out the positive and the, and the negatives. And you know, even though this is a negative to a lot of <laughs> us, uh, what do you call us, crypto anarchists? <laughs> um, he's definitely, definitely, in my opinion, putting him on the scale. Is more of a, a net positive than a negative. He just says 252,000 Bitcoin in MicroStrategy and 17,000 plus in his personal stack that he, he says he's not going to sell. I think that's uh, in my book a net, net positive. So now, <clears throat> why is cold storage the best storage? Well, first of all, let's, let's talk about storage. Let's talk about our Satoshis, right? And where we got them and where we're placing them and stuff like that. So... When I was stacking gold and silver, they had they had, used to have a term. Uh, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. In other words, if you had paper, gold, and silver, you know, an ETF or whatever, you just didn't own it, right? You had to have the physical uh, metal on you in a safe or, you know, wherever, right? In your house somewhere or somewhere on your person. It's, it's yours. It's a bare asset. Well, Bitcoin is the same way. Satoshis are the same way, except it's a digital asset. It's not like... Because when I send people Satoshis back and forth or we do whatever, they think it's like PayPal or Venmo or Zelle or something, and it's just not. Or Cash App, they think they're sending numbers on a screen to another screen, numbers on another screen, and they think, oh, it's just like that. No, it's not. <laughs> you actually own that. It's not, there's nobody in between, there's no third party, and it's not just digits on a screen. It's, it's real, okay? It's real digital. Look at this. Is, is this guy ready for Halloween? This guy, he always goes out. <clears throat> He goes all out. You better have a lot of candy over there. All this stuff. And, uh, <clears throat> and so they think it's the same. It's not, right? Bitcoin and Satoshis, because it's Satoshi Saturday, is a bearer asset. Okay, you can you can physically uh, <laughs> take custody of it digitally through a physical way, and I'll talk about that in a second. But how do how do most people hold their Satoshis? Well, a lot of people have them on the exchange. And what's an exchange? Exchange is where you buy your Satoshis uh, from, right? You can buy it from Cash App, Strike, uh, Swan. And speaking of those, you can get some free Bitcoin, free Satoshis down in the links below if you sign up. Um, you can use whatever you want, but I would suggest you use some Bitcoin ones. And I got three down there. I got Strike. You get five bucks free signing up. Uh, if, you get a, if you do daily buys, weekly buys, whatever, DCA, uh, it's free DCA after a week on the eighth day. And then with Swan, you'll get $10 of free Bitcoin Satoshis. And then you'll get uh, 10,000 of your first uh, purchases, 10,000 of your first purchases, no fees at all. It's crazy. And then the Bitcoin well, which is great. They'll give you some tosses in the well to earn you some free Satoshis if you sign up. And also, um, they are a non-custodial exchange, meaning I don't even think they're exchange. They're just like a broker. You buy it and as soon as you buy it, it goes straight to a wallet, which is cool. So... Those are my top three. You want to get some free stuff, sign up for those. Those also help support the channel. And so people do that. They buy it on Cash App. They buy it on the ones I just talked about, Coinbase, whatever. Then now with the ETF, some people buy it on the ETFs, right? And they keep them in the, in the ETF. And, uh, you know, if some people have to do that. And some people don't, you know. And then once they buy it on these on these exchanges, not the ETFs, but the exchanges I just named, then they may move it over to a wallet on their phone. And that's a hot wallet. And what a hot wallet is, it's a wallet connected to the internet. That's why they call it hot, because it's connected to the internet. And it is, um, it's got a little bit of risk to that. And uh, because it's, you know, on the internet, you don't want to keep a lot of, a lot of <laughs> Satoshis on there, okay? You just, you just don't. It's just, it's almost like a wallet in your in your, in your pocket or your purse or something. How much money you keep in there? Physical cash, I mean, not debit cards or nothing like that. And then you have uh, cold storage or cold wallet, right? <clears throat> it's different kind of brands. I like, me personally, my, my favorite one is, is the uh, cold card. C-O-L-D card, cold card. It looks like a, a uh, calculator. It's really cool. Bitcoin only. And I suggest... 
everything that I'm telling you, uh, when you when you store your Bitcoin, use Bitcoin only, even with the hot wallets. Now, this is the best way to store your Bitcoin, right? You can do it at different levels. You can do multi-sig, uh, collaborative custody and stuff like that. But we'll just keep it simple. We'll just keep it a uh, single signature. When I mean by sig, it means signature. Uh, 12 or 24 words for your, your key phrase as a signature. And we're just going to talk about single sig in this video. And so when you're when you're leveling up into your, your storages or how you hold it, um, you're becoming a sovereign individual, right? When you take it out of the exchange. Now, there's also two kind of uh, hot wallets. There's a not is there, there's a uh, custodial and a non-custodial wallet, right? One of them is where a company actually owns the wallet and then another one doesn't. You know, and when you're downloading these wallets to your phone, make sure you know if it's a custodial or non-custodial, because again, it's, it's almost the same risk as keeping it on the exchange, right? Because somebody owns it. <clears throat> um, me personally, my hot wallet right now, I used to use Moon, M-U-U-N. I like Moon, it's, it's okay. And then uh, Satoshi Bitcoin Lightning Wallet, that's a pretty good one because I thought it was wallet of Satoshi, but they got rid of wallet Satoshi. They moved to another, they moved out of the United States jurisdictions. They don't have it anymore. <clears throat> right now, honestly, my hot wallet right now is my strike, is my strike app. It's actually a wallet, it's pretty cool. I don't keep that many Satoshis in there, um, but you know, it's, it's nice because uh, I, I tip people with that and I keep a little something in one side because I, I buy on strike every, every hour on the hour. And once I get to a certain amount of Satoshis, then I move them over to my to my cold storage, um, my, my setup. <clears throat> and by the way, if you're not technically sound with this kind of stuff and you think you need help uh, setting it up, uh, there's also a link down there to the Bitcoin way. If you guys watch any Bitcoin videos, you guys heard of Bitcoin way. Uh, they're highly recommended by a lot of people that actually help me set up my situation, my setup. Also to help you get a run a Bitcoin node, a full node too. I run a full node. And uh, you just click the link down below and book a 30 minute free call. It's a free call. And then see if they can help you talk about pricing and everything else. And it's really, it's a really good situation if you're not good with uh, computers like me. I'm not good. I'm more of a uh, philosopher. <laughs> so make sure you give Tony from the Bitcoin way a call and tell him Jerry sent you. Okay, enough of the commercials, all right? So when you set up your uh, your next level after your hot wallet for your cold storage, this is this is deep. This is like a deep freezer. Cold storage is not on the internet, right? This is again. This is becoming a full blown self sovereign individual. Now here's what I will remind you of: when you're full sovereign, meaning you're not depending on anybody else. There's pros and cons of that, right? What's the pros? Well, the pros are you're you're a sovereign individual. You don't have to worry about anybody holding it and stuff like that. But the cons are, <clears throat> uh, if something happens and goes wrong, uh, there's no customer service to call, <laughs> right? You're you're on your own. I mean, if you lose your 12 or 24 words or can't find them or can't get in there, then that Bitcoin is gone forever. There's no, again, there's no customer service to call. So that's why I tell people, you know, I don't, I don't suggest people to rush into that. Um, you gotta really, understand Bitcoin and learn it and stuff like that and have your stuff airtight, man. Because again, if you lose that, that, that C phrase, that C phrase uh, there's no getting it back and somebody's got your Bitcoin. Or if you lose it, it's just gone and nobody got your Bitcoin. Uh, but cold storage is similar to, again, like I said, with, the, uh, with, with gold, right? The gold and silver, the precious metals, even platinum. It's if you don't hold it, you don't own it. Well, same thing with Bitcoin, a bearer asset. Not your keys, not your coins, or, I like, or what I like to say, not your keys, not your cheese, <laughs> right? And this is what Michael Saylor was talking about, what the crypto anarchists <clears throat> saying that, oh, you know, these companies just want to sell you, <laughs> sell your wallets and stuff like that. Again, the cold, car, the cold card ain't cheap. It's just not, especially the new one. The new one's like 200 or something bucks. But when you're looking at your Satoshis, and you're looking at them like two ways. If you got a hundred thousand Satoshis and you're looking at them like they have, they have the purchasing power of US dollars in the future, and you're looking like you got a hundred thousand dollars, would you pay a one time $250 fee? Tell me, <laughs> I did. <clears throat> 
And then you got to look at it as, okay, well, if one of these companies shut down the exchanges or whatever, uh, <laughs> you're screwed. And it's happened plenty of times with Mount Gox and FTX and, you know, other ones. Because again, if you hold your Bitcoin with a third party, it is not your, it is not your Bitcoin. It's not your Satoshis, guys. It's just not, right? I mean, it's scary either way if you don't know what you're doing. That's why I say practice uh, learning how to self-custody your, your, your Satoshis, man. I, I think it's very important. I'm not telling anybody to do it. You know, I'm just giving you the pros and cons and stuff like that. But I would highly suggest uh, if you want to sleep good at night, I would really thinking about uh, getting yourself a cold storage once you master your hot wallet and get a few Satoshis on there. Because, again, you don't want to... Uh, <laughs> You don't want to put a bunch of Satoshis on the on the hot wallet. It's just like a wallet in your pocket or your purse, like I said. So with your cold storage, what do you have? You have a device that it's a signature of device. That's why they call it single sig, multi-sig, or whatever. And it signs to the transaction. So anytime you want to move Bitcoin uh, around, you want to take it out of your cold storage, you have to sign it. So if you want to uh, consolidate UTXOs, unspent transaction outputs like we said a few weeks ago and let's say you got 10 utxos and you want to consolidate them down to two while in your sparrow uh desktop setup i would download that too that's a setup a sparrow s-p-a-r-r-o-w it's a uh <laughs> it, it works great with cold card and you download that to your, it's only desktop now that's what i use it on and then you consolidate it down to one you have to sign it with your with your cold card now, does your cold card have your Bitcoin? No, it does not hold it. Unlike the exchange and unlike your hot wallet, it does not have your Satoshis on there. <clears throat> your Satoshis are on the blockchain in your cold card. Without your 12 or 24 words, they're gonna be stuck there forever. You can't move them. You can't do a signature, you can't do anything. So again, if you lost your uh your cold card or any kind of Bitcoin only uh, device, uh, you can just buy a new one and use the same 12 or 24 words and get right into it. So don't don't worry about that. And again, you don't want to lose it and lose your money. But um, I just think it's important, you know, to know that because a lot of people think, you know, they look at that thing and it looks like a jump drive or something. And they, you know, because we're so used to the <laughs> computers and the and the uh, TradFi stuff and everything. It's not, it's not like that. It doesn't have your information on there. <clears throat> so I think personally it's important, right? I was gonna talk about something else this, this week, but I just wanna remind you guys to, if you're not, if you're not um, a self-sovereign individual, again, I, I would highly suggest looking into it because anything can happen at any time. As much as I love Strike and Swan and, you know, these c companies, there's still companies with a CEO, and again, they're holding your Bitcoin. And if you got it on Coinbase, by the way, you know, again, I don't like to tell people what to do, but if you have it on Coinbase, guys, Coinbase, in my personal opinion, doing my research, is the biggest honeypot there is. And what I mean by honeypot is this is where this is why I got rid of my gold and silver because people can just break into your house and just get into that honeypot, steal all your your precious metals right? <clears throat> there are a lot of coins and a lot of Satoshis on Coinbase. And if the government wanted to uh, control things in our, in our, in our industry, let's just say uh, Coinbase would be the first place to go. So if you do have it on Coinbase, guys, even if you got to put it on a, on a hot, on a hot wallet, I would do it <clears throat> and uh, then move yourself up to, uh, to a cold storage. So there you have it, guys. Uh, how to be a sovereign individual. Again, not your keys, not your cheese. And uh, I would highly suggest looking into it. Again, I, you know, I know what Michael Saylor said and everything, but again, he's riding the fence here a little bit. Even I think himself, personally, I think he's got his in cold storage. Obviously, MicroStrategy doesn't because they're a company and they can't do that. Same as BlackRock. A lot of these companies, again, they, they, they have it on Coinbase, a lot of them. And a lot of it's there. But again, if you have it on Coinbase, take it off there. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And again, guys, listen, no matter how, how hard you try 
to ignore what's going on uh, with Bitcoin and the Satoshis and everything else and, and the inflation and stuff uh, because of the political situation. Um, this this uh, gold or yellow brick road that's building up under us, it's coming, man. It's coming. And if you're not studying your ass off about these Satoshis and stacking like a madman or a madwoman, <clears throat> I'm not saying the train is going to leave you behind. You always, I believe you'll always be able to buy them. Maybe not always, but I think in the next 10 years you'll be able to buy them. But let's just say your dollar is getting weaker and your Satoshis are getting stronger, uh, relatively speaking. And since that's the case, if I were you, if I was in your shoes, I would really consider getting them off the exchange. Definitely if you have it on Coinbase, study what you have and think about your legacy in the future because these dollars are dying. Um, again, talking about Michael Saylor, when you're thinking about quote unquote investing or savings, uh, there is no second best. It's just not. And you have to look at <laughs> this future train, this Bitcoin train, because it's headed down the tracks and it's coming fast. And uh, over this next 18 months, 18 to 24 months, it's gonna be a lot of pain, man. Uh, interest rates are gonna be dropping and the money printer is gonna be turning on very, very quickly. And inflation is gonna be taking off. And I, I always say this, there's only one way it's gonna stop inflation in the near term, mid term, and the long term. And uh, once this, I don't know, 10, 15 year period's up, uh, people are going to be, in my opinion, uh, getting paid <laughs> in those $1 what I said for $1 for 1,490 something Satoshis, uh, people are gonna be getting that in a week or a month uh, here in, in the not too long future. So if that's the case, um, you need to learn about it, get as much as you can and set up your family for the future. And uh, people are gonna be working for this. And if you don't get on it now, you're gonna be working for it. So I'm gonna say what I always say. I say it once. And I've said it a thousand times. You guys already know what I'm going to say. Stack Satoshis today. Today, guys. Please. So you and your family doesn't have to work for those same Satoshis tomorrow. I love each and every one of you. And I'll talk to you soon. Peace and love, guys.